everyone. Salam alaikum. Hola a todos. My name is Emily Aman, and this is the second video in our series to teach you about how to grow your own food in a way that is healthy and healing for planet and people. I want to teach you how you can grow wherever you are in a way that is going to be healing for you, for your family, for your community, and for the lands and waters where you live. So in this second video, I want to start with what's going to be really, really helpful for you, whether you are growing in containers on a balcony, whether you're growing in your backyard, or whether you're growing in a community garden, and that is planning. It is extremely important to do observation and to do planning and to have clearly defined goals before you actually get started. And a lot of what I'm going to share with you today comes from a design system called permaculture, which has three main ethics. The first is people care, the second is earth care, and the third is fair share. So, and the fair share basically means justice and um, making sure that there's balance in all things that you're doing. And permaculture is a design system that uses a lot of planning and observation as well as working in harmony with the earth and whenever you're working in harmony with the earth where you are it's actually going to greatly reduce the amount of your work and also increase the amount of your yields and just make your whole experience with growing food a lot easier and more enjoyable so let's get started let's talk about where do you want to start with your planning First of all, you want to define your goals. What is your goal in terms of what you want out of growing your own food? Think about your goals. Second, you want to do a lot of observation and um, make a determination of what you have access to to grow your own food. So do you only have a balcony and you're in an apartment? Or do you have a backyard? Or are you going to grow in a community garden? Third, you want, to, you want to, wherever you decide that you're going to grow, you want to deeply observe the sunlight patterns. And you want to observe those sunlight patterns throughout every different season. And I would highly advise taking a lot of different photos at different times of the day um, and throughout different seasons. If it's possible for you to do one full year of observation, that's highly recommended. But if you can't do that, just try and get a, a decent understanding of where you're going to have more sun and where you have more shade because different plants have different needs as far as how much sun or shade that they need. Second, soil. You want to get an evaluation of your soil. So if you're going to be growing in containers, that's really simple. You're going to purchase potting soil. Um, if you are going to be growing in um, the soil of a yard or community garden, you absolutely need to start with the safety aspect of that, which is you need to do a soil, um, you need to test your soil. And I'm gonna do a video, <clears throat> excuse me, in our series where I show you how to use a commonly found soil testing kit to do that soil testing. Um, in particular, you need to make sure that there is not lead in your soil because that's a major contaminant that will get into your food and can cause lead poisoning. And then you also wanna test things like pH, potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. <coughs> Third, you want to think about water. And again, think about um, how you're going to get the water that's needed to your plants. And we'll go in um, more in depth if you are growing in your backyard or a community garden about how to design that so that you're using water in an efficient way. And we'll also talk about rain barrels and things like that. Fourth, you want to think about wind. Um, pay attention to the wind patterns wherever it is that you're going to be growing. In particular, if you're on a balcony, you want to be really careful to observe your wind patterns, um, especially the higher up that you are in the building. You're going to get a ton of wind and you might not be able to do so well with taller plants. And then that additional wind is also going to dry out the soil in your containers a lot faster. Fourth, you want to think about the climate where you live. So do you live in Arizona and you're in a desert? Um, or are you um, in Maryland, for example, um, and we have lots of rain and we have all four seasons? Or are you in Florida where it's really humid um, and it's warm throughout the entire year? 
think about your climate and find out what plants will and will not work in your climate. I would also highly recommend find out what USDA zone that you live in and you can look that up online and you'll get tons of information about what does and doesn't work well based on what zone that you live in. Um, next, you want to think about animals. Um, wherever you are, think about what animals may um, potentially become a challenge as well as what animals are going to be beneficial where you are. So again, um, from my own experience, um, the first time that I was growing food by myself as an adult, I was living um, in an apartment with a balcony and I was on the 17th floor. And so that meant that there were no pollinators that were gonna be able to come up that high to pollinate my plants. And it meant I had a lot of wind and could not do tomates because the wind was just knocking them over. But think about, for example, are you gonna have challenges with white-tailed deer? Are you gonna have challenges um, with birds? Are you gonna have challenges with squirrels? Um, if you're in an urban area, think about whether or not you might have challenges with rats. Um, and also, again, think about what are the beneficial animals and insects that you also wanna attract into your space to help pollinate your food. Um, next, think about the type of plants that are gonna work well for growing in your uh, USDA zone. And also think about the types of plants that are most important to you um, for what you wanna eat and what you wanna have around you. And that goes back also to your goals. Um, is your goal only to grow food or do you want to have a space that is uh, for eating and it's for beauty as well? Um, do you want to grow your own herbs for medicine, that kind of thing? Um, you want to look at the topography or the landscape of the land. Um, this is particularly applying if you are growing in your backyard or a community garden. Um, and then finally, you want to look at the, the human geography or like the human landscape of what is the circumstances that you're growing in. Um, is it going to be only you um, by yourself on the balcony? Um, taking care of the plants or is it other people who are going to be involved with the process and also think about how you can um, do growing of your own food in a way that is going to be beneficial for the animal and the human communities that are around you. So for example, um, consider whether or not if you have a, a huge abundance of food that you're growing, whether or not you may want to donate some of that to your local food pantry. Find out where it is, find out how you could donate, that kind of thing. So all of this goes into your planning and um, I'm also going to provide you a number of different links um, to videos and books on permaculture and permaculture design and planning as well as um, permaculturewomen.com which does um, the ladies from Permaculture Women, Permaculture Women's Guild actually offer some free classes about permaculture design that's going to help you with all of your planning process that just makes everything um, so much more integrated and makes it easier and more efficient, the better planning that you can do when before you actually start. So that's all for video number two. And stay tuned for video number three, where we're going to talk about what materials you need to get started with container gardening on a balcony or a deck.